Good morning and welcome. I'm Celeste and this is my channel, Celeste Creates. And this is Doug. Doug got a haircut. You say hi. You say hi, Doug. Doug, the golden doodle, says goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye, Doug. Bye. 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 <laughs> he thinks I got something for him. Are you a good dog? <laughs> I don't have a treat for him, so now he's upset. He's gonna wait. So back to my official intro. Today is a Thursday, July 14th, I believe. I can't believe it's already the middle of July. Um, and I am back for a quilty tube and this is quilty tube number something. And I really should have looked it up before I started this, but I didn't look it up. Um, but whatever number it appears to be in the title, then that's the quilty tube that it is. I'll figure it out later. But welcome back. It has been since February, I think February 4th, since I did a quilty tube. And um, so I know some of you have been asking and waiting for me to come back and do that. And so here I am today. Um, I thought I would get this film this morning and um, maybe get to film a floss tube this afternoon and have them both uploaded for you. And that'll be a lot of fun if you want to spend that amount of time with me. So anyway. I have been quilting some, um, but enough that I could show you what I've uh, made progress on in the last five months, I guess. Um, so I, I think um, probably I cross stitch lately more than I quilt, but I still absolutely love, love, love quilting and sewing. And then um, I just in the past couple of weeks picked up cross stitch after, well, I was going to say after a long break from cross stitch, but I don't know if that's really true. I would say it's all new to me. Uh, crochet, I'm sorry, crochet. Um, break from crochet. I learned probably when I was 10 how to, you know, do the first chain and work my way back. I probably made a couple coasters and that was it. And um, so now I've kind of, I've taught myself crochet again and made progress. And so now I feel like I'm between quilting and cross stitch and crochet and um, I can't play favorites and um, I love them all and I just feel so blessed that I can enjoy all three of those um, hobbies and uh, crafts. So, um, but today we're gonna talk about what I've been doing in the quilting area of my uh, creative life. And so I'm glad you're here to join me. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I am so glad you're here to spend time with me. If you are a returning viewer, I'm so glad. Either way, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel down below. Like the video. I'm just so thankful that you're here. I enjoy your comments all the time. Um, they're so much fun to read. I really get a lot of joy from that. <clears throat> So, um, with that being said, let's start the video with a pass to finish. So I have been sewing since I was a little girl, probably 10. Again, it was one of those things my mom taught me how to sew. I made a few outfits or maybe not even complete outfits, maybe some shorts or a skirt, but that was the kind of sewing that my mom did. And, um, I just didn't enjoy it and so I did a couple things and then I really did not do anything again until after um, my first child was born in 2000 um, in is that right yeah September of 2000 for my birthday I got my first sewing machine as an adult um, and I started teaching myself how to quilt so um, let's see he'll be 2000 this is so 22 years almost of quilting and I still love it I love it um, so I you know made lots of different quilts and then gosh I guess this would this came out in 2014 so I would have bought it then um, this is probably one of the first books um, that I got from Lori Holt and it was one of her earlier books. This is called Great Grainy Squared, and I loved the cover quilt. Actually, the 
the quilt itself is done in my favorite, favorite, favorite Lori Holt line ever, which is um, Vintage Happy, right? I didn't come up with it today. Let's look at the hair. Y'all are gonna rue the day that I decided to film uh, today, but I'm pretty sure this is Vintage Happy, right? If not, I'll hear from Lori. Yep, Vintage Happy. <laughs> So I bought this book and um, I did uh, made, did made plans to, to make this quilt and I had a great time making this and I thought I would show this one today because lately there has been a revival um, with Lori Holt of her great granny uh, squared. There's been a great granny um, sew along or great granny along. I forget what the hashtag is. I'll put it down below. Um, and I've already made this quilt, so I wasn't doing the quilty part and I wasn't doing the cross stitch greeny square pattern that she has, but I did with the crochet. I've always, always, always wanted to make greeny squares, thought I couldn't do it, thought I needed somebody to teach. So I really thought I needed somebody to teach me how to make greeny squares, crochet them. Um, but I figured it out with some videos. Um, anyway, so I thought that's why I want to show you this quilt today because in honor of the great greeny square revival <laughs> lately, I thought this would be a fun one to sew. So I, for the life of me, um, I cannot remember what fabric this is. I even looked on my, um, I have scraps of some of this left and I looked on the salvage and no help. If somebody recognizes it and can remind me in the comments, let me know. It's been a long time. It's been, you know, eight or nine years since this fabric came out. Anyway, here is my great granny squared quilt. Again, it's a big quilt. But aren't they fun fabrics? I love the bright colors. And I tell you what, these blocks are so much fun to make. Easy to put together, super fun to make. Really, really great quilt. And this one gets used, it's out right now. Since it's such summery colors, um, it's out on our sofa right now and it gets used all the time. I think I was taking a little snooze under it yesterday. <laughs> So here you can see some of the blocks up closer. Fun that is. I quilted this myself with some feathers. And there's a few more. Love those bright colors. And then just did a white um, sashing and background. And then I backed it. This is probably something I got at Joanne's way back when in a gray uh, pin dot. So that is the great greeny squared quilt that I made. I can see I didn't do the, I didn't do a very wide sashing. I did a much thinner sashing in between the blocks and I didn't do any um, posts here. So you can see the original quilt, there's little squares right there, those posts with the sashing. And then there was also this diamond border and I didn't do that either. So Lori, if Lori Holt has taught me anything, if there's anything that rings true in my head that Lori Holt has taught me, it is you're the boss of your own quilt. And I take that to heart and I am the boss of my own quilt. If I don't like something, I'll do it my way. <laughs> um, in fact, I think Lori Holt just came out with a new cross stitch piece that has that saying on it. And um, I really think I need to do that for my sewing area here. So anyway, that's Great Granny Squared. I know the book is still available and um, the Granny Square Along is probably still going and um, you could join in and pick the fabrics you want. It'd be great to do scrappy or pick a line of fabric that you really like and do that. So that is my great granny squared quilt. Okay, so um, I'm not sure this video is gonna have a whole lot of rhyme or reason, um, but I figured while I'm talking about Lori Holt, I will continue talking about things that I have here that are Lori Holt, because she, again, is my favorite designer. She's my favorite fabric designer, quilt designer. Lori, you know I love you. Um, I could live near Lori, I would. <laughs> but 
But uh, anyway, so yesterday I was super excited because I had pre-ordered this book and it finally came in the mail yesterday. And I was so looking forward to this book. Scrappiness is Happiness um, from Lori Holt and Be In My Bonnet. And um, it does not disappoint. I love sewing scrappy the way Lori does. It's just my favorite way to quilt. And so I knew I was gonna love this book and I was super excited to get it and just did a, a, a thumb through last night, looked at every page, but I really wanna go back and look at it in detail because Lori's quilt books are always just so um, chock full of goodness and pictures. I mean, the photography they do for each book is beautiful. You know, it's so Emma does her books and um, and then the quilt patterns. I just, I gotta, I gotta soak them all in because I'm gonna do them all. But let me show you real quick. Oh, I would love the picture from the back. I mean, who would not want that? A grocery cart? I know that's probably a little one, but who wouldn't like a big giant grocery cart full of fabric? Yeah. Okay. So just really quick, I want to show you my very favorite that I think I might have to make right away. So she shows you how to make checkerboard blocks. And then she shows you how to make, I'm trying to see if there's a good picture of this particular quilt. I'm trying to, try not to show, let me see if I can do it this way. You see that? Yep, try not to show you any of the instructions. I want to make that quilt right away. All my scraps, I would need to get me some navy background and I want to make that quilt right there. Let me see if I can show you this other picture without showing. <laughs> Trying not to show the instructions. Isn't that pretty? I love that quilt. I love blue and I love all the colors and definitely, definitely want to make that one. So that is high on my list. And then hold on, I think there was another one that I was just really, really in love with. Um, this one, for sure, it reminds me of um, a table runner of hers I made. The string block quilt. Oh, I love it. That is just my favorite kind of quilt right there. All the color, all the scrappy goodness. I mean, just the patterns in here go on and on. Oh, here's another one. Yeah, definitely want to do this one. Yeah, this might be a Lincoln Logs quilt. My favorite. That's what I love to do. That's what I love to quilt. So thank you, Lori. Thank you, It's So Emma, for another fabulous book. I cannot wait to dive in and get busy. So excited about that. So speaking of more Lori Holt, because there's always Lori Holt on my table. That sounds weird. <laughs> um, recently, I was setting up a display um, for summertime on my aqua cabinet, and I did some bee stitching. I still have some I'd like to do. And um, for my little quilt rack, I made a bee mini quilt. And I used the, this is the bee, I think, from the second Farm Girl Vintage book. There's one in the first, there's one in the second. Actually, there's another one in here. There might be a fourth one in another book. Um, but this is, I believe, the one from the second Farm Girl Vintage. And I did this with Lori Holt fabrics, except for this one. This is a fig tree. The black is a fig tree fabric, but I don't have a whole lot of black. But other than that, those are all Lori Holt. Did the backing and the binding, and that is hanging down in my bee display. I just love it. Love it with the aqua background. So fun. Uh, let's see, so I made that. That is Lori Holt show you this since the last time I saw you in February so I have plenty of time to do this I think I finished it up pretty soon after we last met because I knew I, I know I only had a few blocks left to do I did finish um, assembling my farm girl vintage two quilt so my first farm girl vintage quilt um, hangs downstairs in our den over my sofa um, one of my favorite quilts I've ever made and I love having it down there and um, I'm not sure why I haven't quilted this yet um, but sometimes when you do these videos it kind of gives you the inspiration yourself to go ahead and do that thing that you're like why haven't I done that so anyway maybe this I have batting so maybe this will get on the, the list to get quilted oh 
So here's my Farm Girl Vintage 2. And I will try to insert some pictures of the whole thing. I just love it. I didn't do any sashing on this one. I didn't do any extra border around anything. I just mashed those blocks all next to each other. And I love it. I really do need to get this quilted. What have I been waiting for? Let me see. Hold on. Look at the goat. Love the corn and tomatoes. Blocks. Love that beehive. I need to do the beehive for my bee display downstairs. So anyway, that is my Farm Girl Vintage 2 and um, it's ready to be quilted. There's the bee. Yep, see Farm Girl Vintage 2. That's the bee quilt. Uh, bee quilt block. So that is done and I might just have to leave this out so I can remember to get it quilted. I don't remember if I have backing or not, but I might have something. So that's some Lori Holt. And then lastly, I think that's my last Lori Holt thing. Quite now. Um, Nicole from Nicole's Needlework, one of my favorite floss tubers, she got me um, excited about um, English paper piecing again. And so I bought a quilt called Jelly. It is called Jelly Garden from the Sweetwater Cotton Shop. I'll show you, this is my PDF. It's called Jelly Garden. And so you make the English paper pieced flowers to make the quilt and the colored part, the actual flowers, not the white in between, but the flowers are made from a jelly roll. So I, um, I had done English paper piecing in the past and um, really just kind of stopped because I felt like I didn't, I never had a plan for it and I just wasn't working toward anything and that, um, I don't do well just kind of willy nilly making things. I really wanted a plan. So I was really excited and I ordered a jelly roll of Lori Holt fabric and oh my goodness, which one is this? Okay. So that I bought myself a prim jelly roll um, by Lori Holt um, from her fabric line prim because I actually never made a whole quilt out of all that line and I kind of like to do that. Um, I haven't always done it. So anyway, I have this. Um, this was a makeup bag I got ages ago somewhere, Kroger or Target, something. And I used it, used it for various things, but it's always been good for my English paper pieces. In this pocket over here, oops, stuff's falling out. I have my, my shapes. I have my roll of thread. I have my needles. And um, then in the middle, I really should not have all those out. Anyway, y'all are getting scattered Celeste today. All right, then in the middle here, there's this little thing and I kind of modified it and I have a pair of scissors on a holder that's kind of attached. There's my glue pen, I have a little needle minder. And then over here, these are my bags. I cut the fabric into two and a half inch squares um, to use for my hexagons. And then here I, you know, matched them up as she told us in the pattern. So each little snack baggie here has, um, has a, this is a, this will make a whole flower. Um, so each of the snack bags holds a flower and there's a bunch of them. And I have not done much yet on this, but I'm really wanting to get back to it. So here is a snack bag where I've already glue basted all of the um, hexes for the flowers. So all I need to do now is just stitch the flower together, which is super easy. I just haven't sat down to do it. Probably need to bring this bag. It's been sitting up here. I probably need to bring this downstairs and actually just have it where I can see it downstairs um, so I can work on it and actually get this stitched together. But glue basted, turned out great. 
um, I used to thread baste, which either way is fine. Um, but I thought I'd try the glue this time. I think I like it. Um, but I really have to work on it more. So hopefully in my next um, full YouTube, I will have an update for you. If you want to see how um, they turn out, definitely go visit Nicole's Needlework um, on her floss tube. She does her videos. It's all all one, all, all her quilting and um, stitching and knitting, her beautiful knitting are in one video, but you can see the progress she's made on her English paper piecing and um, it'll just fly you away. So, remind me, take this downstairs and uh, put that where I can see it. So I think that's all the Lori Holt I have to show you. All right, now on to a few other things that I have been working on. Um, I made another mini quilt recently and um, this, um, I really enjoyed having this out in the springtime and it is a little red bird, cardinal maybe. Um, and this actually, I wanted to um, actually play with the block. I've always looked at it and thought, oh, it's gonna be a hard block, I don't wanna make it. <laughs> it is a pattern from Margo Languido. I'm not sure I'm saying that right, but it's called the Pattern Basket is her um, her company. And it's just a, um, a quilt pattern with these birds. I should have put that, but I'll link to it below. A pattern Basket. And I made this particular bird with, um, this is all fig tree fabrics. And actually it was a really fun block to make. So definitely gotta keep that one in mind and make the whole quilt or make even a mini quilt would be fun. Uh, you know, not do a whole huge quilt of birds, but anyway, I love how this one turned out and I will link to that pattern below. So I made that. Um, for my bee display, I also, this is not necessarily quilting, but it is sewing. Um, I made the cutest little beehive to go in my display. Um, so if you are a cross stitcher, you might be familiar with, um, the website Pinker and Pumpkin Quilting. I think that's it. Again, I'll include it below. Um, but she has tons and tons of cross stitch freebies, which I printed off a bunch of her bee ones that I want to stitch. But she also had a really, she has some really cute, simple quilt patterns. And she had one that was just all these cute beehives. So I printed off the template for the beehive from her um, website. It's for free, it's free. And, um, and I looked at it and I thought, oh my goodness, that would be so much fun to make. I wonder if, if I made two of the, the um, they should have been applique on. If I made two of the applique hives, I should be able to sew them together and make a stuffed beehive. So I did, I made two, um, beehive shapes, uh, strip pieced and cut them out, made a little um, beehive opening applique and put that on there, uh, sewed them together, stuffed it, made a little patch on the back with red Lori Holt fabric, tied a cute piece of twine around it, and then I was looking at bee buttons and then I was standing there at my cutting table and this bee has been hanging there for years now. I got this bee on something um, when I went to a Lori Holt quilt retreat in Utah years ago and it's just been hanging on a little dish up there and I thought oh, that's perfect I put this bee finally it has a home a permanent home on this cute little um, beehive so I made that. I will link this below if you want to look at that template and make a mini quilt or make a little um, beehive like this. I did put rice or sawdust in the bottom to weight it a little bit and it's in my display. Super cute. So, and then speaking of stuffed items, um, I finally recently did a tutorial for my stuffed tomato tier. I forget what I called it. I, um, I named it something, but I can't remember now. So this is mine. This is the one that sits downstairs on my, um, next to my stitching chair. Um, so I made another one of these and that one I did, I made a tutorial for and uh, filmed that and it has been uploaded onto my YouTube channel here. 
and you can find that. I'll put a link below. Um, I did a tutorial a long time ago for this size tomato in the middle here and um, that also is on my YouTube channel so if you need to you can use both to make the tier or just make one or make this size. Um, hopefully it's clear um, but it is super easy and super fun to make and I just love mine. I just really love it and I've got a little skinny strawberry hanging off here. So that is available here on my YouTube channel and I hope that you will go see that and watch it and and enjoy making be a great um, gift for a stitchy friend so I did that and then recently like I said I have gotten into <clears throat> crochet and so I make project bags um, often for both to sell and for my own cross stitch projects and um, I have tutorial for that too here on my channel but my crochet needed something different so um, I actually will probably talk more about my crochet in my um, floss tube video. But anyway, so here's my crochet. We'll watch my floss tube to see more about that. But what I did make was a super fun drawstring bag. So I was looking around for a drawstring bag pattern. Pause. I found a free tutorial from Jenny Baker. It's called in her uh, website's in color order. And she has a tutorial for making this um, bag in this particular size. And it's great because it is completely lined. There are no open seams inside that are gonna ravel. Um, it was super easy to understand and make other than I was not reading the instructions and I was having trouble putting my drawstring in. I kept looking at my son. I'm like, why won't it work? Why won't my drawstring draw? Um, well, if you read the instructions and put it in correctly, then it'll work. Anyway, so I made this super cute bag. I can take my crochet and stick it in there and there's my crochet to go. I love it. So then I saw that she had for sale a pattern for the same type of bag and it's in eight sizes. And my daughter was like, well, can't you just figure out the sizes yourself? I'm like, I could, but somebody did it for me and I can then, um, I just don't have to do the work. She did it and I'm not gonna make any mistakes, it's there. Plus I get to support a small business and somebody who's creating um, wonderful patterns and she has some great quilt patterns too that I have. <laughs> Um, so I will link this below, but I plan on making a bunch more of these. I might even sell some. I looked on her, her pattern and it does, says, does say that you can make them to sell. And so, um, really, really cute. <clears throat> I always have to sneeze. Okay. So anyway, super cute. I will be making more of these and again, gifts. Uh, a lot of people make these and put a gift in them and so then you get the gift and the bag really fun so totally need to go visit if anything the um the free tutorial and get that done because those are fun so let's see what else do i have to show you okay what else have i been working on um this one i really hoped i would get a lot more done on and i didn't um i have the other block hanging up on my quilt wall over there but I did do a little more work on my, that's just a really cute pattern. These are with all these vintage um, 30s kind of child prints, love them. Um, so I got a little bit of work done on that, but not a ton. Here's the picture from the magazine and mine will be, a, hers is a, a little more planned, I guess. You can see how some of the groups of colors are um, you know, they're put together like the yellows are grouped a little bit, you know, not, not super planned, but a little bit more. Mine's going to be totally scrappy and all over the place. So I did work on this a little, but here's kind of how I have them. Had some laid out that I was ready to start sewing together and on my design board here. And, um, I just haven't done much on that, but it's a super, super easy easy pattern very fun again very scrappy so 
you know, this speaks to my scrappy Lori Holt heart. So anyway, super cute. And I do want to keep working on that one. And then I did finish a quilt top Monday, maybe. I had bought a quilt kit um, from somewhere, but it was a Kim Deal quilt kit. And I really wanted to try making something with her fabric, see if I like them. And I do, I mean, it's not my top favorite, but it's a really pretty quilt and it'll be lovely. But the quilt kit, I kind of got the pattern out of the quilt kit and I decided I don't really want to make that. That just doesn't look like a fun piecing quilt to me. It just depends on what I'm in the mood for. So um, I kind of ditched the pattern and <laughs> took the fabric that was in the quilt kit and um, used it all uh, to make my own. <laughs> so I guess technically these would be four patch snowballs. And here's what I made. So these are all Kim Dill fabrics, even the whites here, but the border is a laundry basket quilt that I had from Editor Sitar. But aren't those fun? And that came from all the fabric. I used it all that was in the quilt kit. And I made these, these blocks. And I love how it turned out. So I'm gonna need to get some backing. And won't that make a really pretty fall quilt? I love it. it turned out really, really pretty. So, um, you know, think outside the box. If um, you, you don't have to do what the pattern says all the time, exactly as it says, you don't have to do at all. <laughs> Um, so I, you know, I had that moment of feeling bad, like, oh, I bought this quilt kit and I don't really want to make this particular quilt. It doesn't look fun. Um, darn, I wasted it, but not really, look, I made something completely different all on my own. So, um, you know, be creative, think outside the box, look around for other ideas or, um, ways to put something together and you can do it. So um, I think the last thing I want to show you that I need to work on here, this is a need to work on. This is a quilt uh, top that I finished a good while back. This is a pattern from one of my favorite um, designers, Sue Fow. It's Sweet Jane Quilts. She has a couple of books. She has great patterns in her shop on Etsy and I have a good number of them and they are great, great quilt patterns. Um, great to especially for take for some pre-cuts and so this is one of hers that I used a layer cake from Bonnie and Camille and made this quilt top See that? super easy super cute this is going to be a baby quilt um, I know it's kind of big for a baby quilt but um, I really wanted it to be more of a grow with you kind of baby quilt um, so really all I need to do is pin it. I have backing. I need to pin it and quilt it and get it gifted. So that is on my list to do, but I will link this pattern below. But it was really a fun, fun, easy pattern. And again, that was with a layer cake. I just love having these patterns on hand, especially a pattern like this one um, I love because it is made with a layer cake and no extra fabrics for the quilt top. So if there is a line of fabric that comes out that you really like um, and you just want to make something with it, um, these kinds of patterns that only take the pre-cut, so this only was one layer cake, I love that because I can make a quilt without any additional fabrics enjoy it um so i like doing that sometimes so i need to get that quilted and hopefully i can show you that in my next um video if i haven't gifted it if not i'll include a picture um and then the last thing i made was a donation quilt for the knights of columbus up at our church they had their annual um kind of awards banquet um and so we um we went to that and then they also had, um, we couldn't go to the casino night that they had, but they had a great silent auction. And so I made them a quilt for their silent auction and it was before July 4th. So I thought, well, I'm gonna go with a scrappy um, red, white, and blue quilt 
So I made that and quilted it and gave that to them for their silent auction and I think it did well. So I can insert a picture of that quilt here. A lot of fun to make. I pulled reds and whites and blues from my stash and cut five and a half inch squares, I think. Arranged them, put a border on it, and it made a wonderful quilt. So I hope whoever bid on that and won it is happy and enjoying it right now. So, all right, let me show you a couple other things that I bought, and then I have a giveaway for you. All right, now I don't know if I will get to this this year. It might have to wait until next uh, summer. But I found this really awesome pattern. It's like a one page pattern. Handful. This is from Running Doe Quilts. And um, I believe they, um, there's little these little quilt cards out there that are like two bucks. And um, I forget the name, but I have a bunch of them. I'll link it below. But this one is the same, oh, Villa Rosa. Villa Rosa Designs produces these little postcards in their quilt patterns, and I have several of those. And um, have really, uh, I've made several of those. And so this particular designer, it's called Running Doe Quilts. It says Running Doe Quilts for Villa Rosa Designs. So I could buy the PDF. It's a one page, $2 pattern that I bought. Love this um, patriotic flag quilt. And what inspired me was a beautiful quilt fabric bundle with these muted colors. Aren't they pretty? So I got this beautiful fabric bundle. I'm so unprepared today. So 30, Ruby's 31 quilting on Etsy. I will link it below. But look how pretty that is. And so she had a bundle in her shop and then she kind of made me a little bit of a custom one so that I could um, create this quilt in particular. And I just love it. I love these right here. Those are really pretty. So that's a project for the future. Um, I was in a local quilt shop recently and got um, some more fabrics to make some project bags to sell. So I've got this cute print here with the tape measures. I think that'll make a really cute couple of bags. That should make two bags. Um, Oh wait, no, did I do that? Yeah. Oh, that'll make a set of bags. No, this is gonna go with something else, sorry. <laughs> this will go with prints that I already have, sorry. This cute tape measure is going with these cute tomatoes and I'll make some project bags out of that. Hopefully to sell soon. And then, oh, could not pass up these Tilda fabrics. So I bought a blue. And that green and that'll be the border the top border of my project bags aren't they pretty mm -mm -mm. love that it's so beautiful so those are a few little things that i got and i'm looking forward to working on some of those um and then i guess is that it lastly i have a giveaway for you so um and I talked a little bit more about Lori Holt today. So what I have for you as a giveaway, and we're just gonna use the word B, B-E-E, -E, Bumblebee, because Lori is B in my bonnet. Um, so tell me about the bees, or just use the word B, B-E-E, -E, in your comment, and you can be entered to win this group of items. So first item in the group, it's all one thing. Um, here's the whole package, so B to win this. We have a really, really cute set of the So Cherry Magnets from Lori Holt. So cute. I love the So Cherry fabric line, one of my favorites. I have a quilt pattern, or set of quilt patterns. All four of these patterns are in this particular quilt pattern right here. Um, four squares, the pattern title, we've got Flip Flop, we've got pixie sticks, twirl, and uh, shuffle. So this fabric line would have come out with, um, I think it's called, is it Gracie Girl? What's the name of the fabric? I made a quilt with it. Anyway, it was for her daughter. It just doesn't sound right. Anyway, 
Um, I think it was Gracie Girl. So that, and then I also have a really cute from It's So Emma, a stash and store. And you can use this to stick your um, implements in. Here we go. <laughs> I'm just pulling things really, really useful. You can put your pencil, you know, just all the things, scissors, you can put all your stuff in here, super cute. So if you would like to be entered to win this all together, this little prize package here, use the word B, B, E, E, and uh, you can be entered to win the drawing. So I think that's all I have to share with you today. I hope that you are staying inside and stitching and quilting and whatever else you do and staying cool. It has been super hot here um, south of Houston, just really, really hot. Um, and so we are definitely staying inside. Um, I know my outside, my garden needs a lot of attention, but it is just not a happy place outside. Um, so we are doing well. We are having a great summer and um, just doing all the things and enjoying time together. And I am glad to get back to some sewing and I can't wait to show you what I've been up to next time we, we meet again. And uh, please know that I keep you all in my prayers and that you are also very special to me. May God bless you. And thank you for joining me. Have an awesome, however long it is, until I see you for another quilty tube. Bye.